What's up, nerdlings? What up, nerdlings? Hey, do you nerd for Siege? Tom is collecting right now. The Southeast Game Exchange. Oh Woo! my gosh. Yeah, first of all, check it out. We we went there, we got the shirts. Hey, we didn't just get the shirts, we got the double shirts because yeah. both designs were too cool. I couldn't I couldn't not have my version of this design and vice versa. Vice versa. So. The cool thing about these though is you got to pick your shirt color and the color of the print. So that was really neat. And then they made it right there on the spot. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so yeah, Southeast Game Exchange. This is a very, very awesome gaming convention that is in Greenville, South Carolina. Now we have wanted to go to this one for a few years now. It was one of our bucket list items. Yep. We can check that box. We have always heard such wonderful things about it. First of all, the people that go there, they love it. They love seeing the convention. They love meeting up with all the people. Always heard good things about the deals to be found. Now, on that note, I would like to say that with gaming prices all over the place, skyrocketing mm -hmm. lately, it, it felt a little harder to find deals, but I think that's because of the climate. I don't think that has anything to do with the convention itself. It's totally that collector climate and all those prices going through the roof anyway. Why is everything so expensive? My other complaint, I have to say, is totally the location. Now, I'm not talking about the convention center. That was a beautiful convention center. Oh yeah, center. that was nice. Plenty of space. Vendors had lots of space. Perfect. Let's talk about the South Carolina thing though. <laughs> so, how Wait, far... Well, where are we located? Yeah, we're in Missouri, which equals to how far of a drive? How long? 12 hours. Yeah, 12 hours. We will drive almost a thousand miles just to go to Siege. That's right. It's almost a thousand miles. 777 as we left. So we drove until about midnight that night and we got just over the Kentucky border but I think that was probably the worst time to be there because we're talking two-lane highways we're talking trees and what looked like bayou everywhere and no lights anywhere to be uh -uh. found it was dark there's like no place to get gas there's no lodging we're thinking okay maybe this part was a mistake think horror movie back roads that's kind of what it was like driving. <laughs> but eventually we found a couple of places. We stopped for the night. Started that trip up the next day. This was my first drive through the Smoky Mountains. I can't speak for you. No, I have been through them before, but, but it still impresses me and makes it like it's the first time every time I see it. So that's where the Smoky Mountain smoke comes from. Definitely some gorgeous visuals to keep us company. And as well as keeping us company, we had the lovely Jay Love and Linda talking to us the whole time, which definitely helped make the trip seem at least that much shorter. <laughs> My God. <laughs> you know, the fact that I pictured it. <laughs> yes, these are the conversations we have to have in the whole time. <laughs> The road work, the traffic jams, and gridlock, and not so much. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like you literally had a Pringle soaking in the juice, but it's got all the crisp of a chip. Yeah. Okay, yeah. seriously though, that's that's probably the, the worst thing that I could say about this whole experience was, uh, you know, traffic and, and traveling a long way. Mm. 
How you doing? <laughs> Urge to kill. Rising! Friday night, we managed to make it to the hotel at a decent time in the afternoon. We got everything set up in the room. Yes. Was the room to your liking? It was amazing. I really <laughs> enjoyed the room. There was this really awesome chaise lounge in there that I'm like, you think this will fit in the car? <laughs> <laughs> we also met up with Jen. This was our first time meeting J-Love, so that was very awesome. Not yet. Yeah. They just went back to their room. It's so good to see you. I'm going to squeeze you both. I don't know if I'm going to be like, this is a retro wolf. Also, our first time meeting up with Matt, Retro Wolf 88, and so many other people. Sean, 8 Big Glitch. Uh, you know, we got to hang out briefly with Got G. We hit up the convention center. We got our special passes. Special we, guest passes. We were special guests. There really wasn't much to see on the floor. Vendors were still setting everything up. But Although, we did get a chance to talk to Austin. We did. And I was just going to say, the vendors weren't quite ready yet, but I already hit spike. Oh quite a gosh. few plushy boots. Oh my God. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment with the pickups. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Got a little but overwhelmed. I wanted to let Austin know how appreciative <laughs> we were that he thought of us to be special enough to be special guests. Austin, seriously, thank you again so, yes. so much. That means the world to us that you would think so highly of us. Austin <laughs> is such a cool, cool guy. If any of you ever get a chance to talk to him, he's so mellow, so grounded. And he's the, nice. The fact <laughs> that he was able to keep his cool over all this, I mean, he had to have had a thousand fires going at once. But anytime you talk to him, he was just, you know, hey guys, how's it going? It's like, kudos to you, man. You put on a great <laughs> convention. Yeah, so thank you. Now, after all of that, we did head back to a very local, <laughs> to our hotel, <laughs> uh, restaurant, or rather a restaurant, I believe they're called, Twin Peaks, where we met up with, uh, oh my gosh. Everybody, I felt <laughs> we, like. We got Gaming Off the Grid, we've got Zab Crystal, Mr. Rightway, uh, Pac-Man Case was there, Retro Wolf, 8-Bit Glitch, you've got J-Love, you've got Linda, you've Mega Dan. got, oh, Mega Dan, Mega Meg. Uh, John Riggs was in there. Uh-huh. Uh, Gabo and, and uh, Riff showed up at one point. There's some names that I'm probably forgetting. I do apologize, but everyone was popping in there. We had a great time. Some meals, some drinks. <laughs> I, uh, I might have... Tried to get that party going a little bit. I, I yeah, surprised she did everyone. Buy a, a lovely round of, of shots. Pretty sure you got J Love her new favorite shot, the oh, Scooby yeah, Snack. Scooby snack. <laughs> Just a wee nip of courage to be ready for the weekend. Ahead. And the food was good too. Now, at this point, actually, uh, Mr. Rightway surprised us with a couple of, of he little did. gifts. He was passing out some things. He did. I got. He gave me this really cool Wendy's Kids Meal toy with uh, Super Mario stuff in it. Yeah, I love how it's designed like a Game Boy Advance boxed game. Nifty enough, it's a board game, and it, it is a two-sided board game. And you got your little tokens here, and... It's uh, super cute. I had no idea Wendy's did these, did you? No, no idea at all. I didn't know Wendy's ever had cool toys. Sorry, Wendy's. <laughs> but again, I love the box design and it's got that, you know, Super Mario Brothers aesthetic, the Game mm -hmm. Boy Advance, but then it's a board game, so that's perfect for you because you love your tabletop I love it. stuff. And uh, to go along with the famous barrel, you got a little Donkey Kong figure right here. Got his arm up. He's he's flexing. I need to figure out a way to, <laughs> to attach that to the barrel. So then we have Donkey Kong with the barrel. Saturday began, first day of the convention. We got up, got our breakfast, you know, chatted with our buddies there. Got in the car, carpooled over. Uh, we, we had Sean, Linda, and Jen. They, they were our carpool buddies they for were, the weekend. They were. They were. That's some great conversations just to and from the convention. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's jump into some pickups. What was one of the first things? It doesn't have to be the first thing, but one of the first things you grabbed. Well, the very first plushie I got of the entire trade show 
was this little cool orange Pac-Man ghost, but guess what? Wah, 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 wah. I love this. It flips inside out. <laughs> that is so clever. I, I love how clever and how perfect I know, that that's just great. It's it's I've seen these, but I have haven't found one that I liked in this new reversible popular toy until now. We did get one of the event guides, by the way, although someone said uh, near the end of the They ran out of them the first day, actually. That they had people sign theirs, or yes. sometimes they would yes. go around. In retrospect, I wish I'd been smart enough to uh, to think of that and have people sign yeah. ours. Mm -hmm. It's a great guide. It's got, you know, information about all the guests and everything, including, you know, oh, look, there I was we just are. saying, <laughs> but uh, the panel information, looks like there was a little map, the vendor, the list. vendor list. So I, I really do like when events, conventions, uh -huh. whatever, do stuff like that. Austin actually said he didn't even get one because oh. they ran out. <laughs> Poor Austin. Various merch. We yep. got a video game cavern bracelet, like so rubber bracelet and video games monthly yeah, bracelet i guess some vgm stuff there was a great 3d printing table they had so many cool things there and uh, i loved their their business, their business card. card yeah it's just a printed it's a token point. 3d print palace so be sure to check them out we may have to uh see if they can ship anything because it might have been a thing or two that in you know, thinking yeah. back on it, I would like to have that. There's just something I had my eye on, but by the time I made it back around, it was gone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. You always have to weigh that out. Yeah. Uh, do you, do what, you wait? Do you not wait? Yeah. What do you guys like to do? We generally like to try to make one whole lap around the floor before we start picking stuff up. But then you, even then, you still risk yeah. that one item being gone by the time you come Although, back around. Although, that was a problem this convention, oh wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And why but was yeah. that a problem this Both year? Both days, just to cut in, both days, we made one round each day. That's it. And it's because we would stop and talk to so many people. <laughs> but yeah. I I think I had more fun doing that. I anyways. know, yeah, yeah. I did. For the first time, I actually didn't mind not shopping, which is a shocker for me. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, we oh, yeah. had our J-Love buttons. Woo! We're rocking those all weekend long. Um, speaking of other people merch the zombified russ lyman <laughs> and what was one of the first things you noticed that there was a worm coming out of his ear <laughs> asking what you doing what you doing and then we got a sticker and a keychain from zap crystal these are great i love stuff like that while wandering the floor yeah. might have uh, gotten a little muscle man gift you guys remember the muscle figures there were so many of these guys. They're so weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we've got uh, the Texas one. Future Tom, if you're able to find his name, go ahead and pop that in right there. What was something else that you happened to get? Well, um, Mr. Rightway actually gave me this. He had, I don't know if he bought it somewhere or somebody gave it to him, but it was this like little like promo folder thingy that had all these Animal Crossing buttons on it. And after he went around and passed out all the buttons, which he gave me one too, nice. he gave me the little folder thingy. He goes, because I know you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate it and you'll like, you'll like it. So that Very was really cool. nice of him. He could not have picked a better person. I know, it's almost like people know Animal I like Crossing Animal Crossing. I, I tell you what, since that segues so perfectly into one of your pickups, why don't you go right ahead? Well, I lucked out because there was a booth selling the Amiibo cards. And we have finished Series 1 and 2, yes. but 3 and 4 are not close at all. <laughs> so luckily I was able to go through her booth and pick out some of the cards that we were missing. So I was able to pick up quite a few from two or from three and four. And they were mostly, you know, fairly decent prices, but there's some there's some pricey ones in here. So so I was very excited about that. Made a very, very good deal. All in total, she said this was about ninety-eight dollars worth of cards they hear, but she cut me a deal and gave them to me for sixty. So uh, now why do you think she cut you a deal? We well, might have helped out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, she actually didn't know that there was an app that t kept track of all of your cards. And so I was going through it and she's like, what's that? And I was like, it's an app. It keeps track of all your Amiibos, all your Amiibo cards. And she was 
freaking out, and so she went in and downloaded it. And then as I'm digging through the card, she's dancing around the booth going, I've got an app, I've got an app. <laughs> so so she got me a little deal for, for helping her out there. Yeah, a very handy app. Uh, it keeps track of the figures and the cards. Yeah. Uh, the figures might not always be a big deal, you know, to try They're to remember which to ones remember you have, got. but the cards. And like you said, three and four, we we didn't have very many of those yep. because in our area, we weren't seeing a lot of the blind packs out and about. Toys R Us was pretty much gone by the time three and four kind of oh. came out. That was a bigger purchase I made over the weekend that I was all too happy to do. <laughs> well, you like Animal Crossing. You know something I like? Zelda. Oh, of course. <laughs> Actually, my first purchase of the day was a Game Boy Color Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages Scholastic book. This is a cute little book. <laughs> uh, I hope that there is one for Seasons. I may have to look into these and see just how many there are. Maybe there's just the two, so you'd have Seasons and Ages. Okay. Or there might be more, and I might be in a world of hurt oh, no. trying to track <laughs> these down. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff I like to find at conventions, things that you don't generally see out and about. So there was something that was a, a hatchet in a manner of speaking. It was finally laid to rest. You know, uh, <laughs> Gary over at Rock Solid, he claims I stole an exacto uh, uh, knife from him, but hey, he packed it up in the box. When, when I pull something out of a box, I take that as a gift. You almost stabbed yourself with it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, returned his knife, but... Finally, he, so they can stop accusing us at every turn that He did it. want to make sure that didn't happen again, so he gifted us a lovely... A really nice exacto, exacto knife. knife set. Set. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at all of the tools and all of the pieces up here. All the interchangeable blades and whatnot. So, yeah, it was Looks like very a, nice. like an old-timey surgeon's box. So, you know, he, he gave this to us. We'll see how long it takes before I start saying <laughs> I, I picked his pocket and ran off with it. I this. know, he can't though. We have video evidence of him actually admitting <laughs> that he's giving it to you. <laughs> That's now, very fancy. Lady Lacey, can he be trusted with sharp objects? Him more than me. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Gary, he did give you something else He as did! Well. He gave me a Famicom game because he knows I love just the wild colors. <laughs> and I was even talking to him and saying, I don't know if we have a purple one yet. And he just goes, well, now you do. So we got purple um, duck hunt. How did you read that Japanese? Because I'm good. I have a babel fish in my ear. Oh. Something that I had my eye on as we were perusing the tables were Nintendo Power. I have a few gaps in the collection and I wanted to fill those in. So I did manage to pick up two issues. We have number 49, I believe, with Battletoads and Double yeah, Dragon. Grand. Jeez. Now, according to the back, it is complete with poster and the cards, the super power player cards, whatever they're called. But this looks to be in really, really, really good does, shape. Yeah. So that was I can, nice. I can hear the pause music right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then number 76, we have the issue with Killer Instinct on the cover. And I don't care what anyone says. The... Do, you, do you need to use the exacto knife with, with that Killer Instinct? <laughs> <laughs> the CD Killer Cuts. That's a guilty pleasure of mine. I, I still listen to it at work sometimes. I don't care. It's hey, fun. Hey, I saw the mask in there. But uh, you got uh, got the poster in here, so it's looking complete. So that's two more down nice. for the Nintendo Power Collection. I'm trying to get the first 100 at least. Then then we'll see where we go from there. I have another fun Animal Crossing item that I picked up. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot about I know. That. I picked up a nice little fossil here. This is a 3D printed, but what makes it so great is the little spiral comes off and you've got like a like a little jewelry box or trinket box or whatever kind of box you want. So That is such a clever piece. I know. I thought that was so cute. I could not pass that up. You know, that might be a good hiding spot for... Uh, your worms. Ah. Lady Lacey has worms. I've got worms. I got worms. I beg your pardon? 
but I did pick me up some really cute gummy worms. My favorite treat is gummy worms. There's just something fun about that gummy texture, but then, you know, they're real long. You can just pull them off. And so I picked me up some really fun earrings that I might be able to just put in my box. And for what it's worth, you did get to draw a sticker from that. I did. I did <laughs> blind sticker out of a box, and so I got a skateboard and alien. <laughs> <laughs> So I got me this super duper cute Moogle here. And he's got a little satchel and some really cute purple wingies and uh, apparently Saturn over his head. Yeah, see, when I first <laughs> saw him, I thought he was a male Moogle because of the satchel, but I don't recall the Saturn thing. I don't know. He's adorable and I love him. And he's actually the first thing I saw when we were there Friday. So I said, <laughs> Saturday when we go back, boom, getting him. I love my Moogles. And then I had to get me this keychain because guess what? I'm born in the 80s. You missed it by like a month. So you don't get to have this keychain. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I, I can't join that club. I just thought it was super cute. I was like, yeah, I totally need that. All right. Well, a couple of games. I was kind of having fun with the stuff that I was picking up. We got Burger Time for the TI-99. I love Burger Time. I can't wait to try it on this. It's one of my favorite arcade games to play whenever we go to the arcade, so I'm super excited to try this. Yeah, you know, the, the TI it had some really good ports, so it'll be interesting to see how well they did with Burger Time. And Who knew T.I. could do more than make calculators? And then Chester Cheetah Wild Wild Quest. <laughs> Will Smith like to play that game? Yeah. Hey, probably. <laughs> I think there's two on Genesis, which when you think about it, two Chester Cheetah games on one console already. That's, That's... A, a mouthful, two Chester Cheetah games. <laughs> Something that I got mostly because you wanted me yeah, to get Yeah, I told him, I said, I don't care what the game is. It's got weird stuff on the front of it. Pete Sampras Tennis. But yeah, the, the reason we got it is for the J card. I'm guessing Junction card. You've got controller ports. And I believe that's so that you can play doubles in your tennis. Mm, yes, Buffy, let's go play some, some doubles tennis. Mm, yes. Six love. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> is that real terms? Player one to serve. Uh, second service. Uh, love fifteen. I don't even know what six means. I failed math. Oh. <laughs> don't listen, Captain Algebra. I also <laughs> picked up. Normie's Beach Baby Rama, because how can you not? Uh, seriously, I don't know what's going on with this game. I have nothing <laughs> to go off of other than... <laughs> Weird name of Normie's. You've got this, like, caveman-looking dude on the cover, and yeah, Beach Baby Rama. I, so, so we're going to have to check that out and, and see what we're in for. And then uh, Marble Madness here. Well, I picked that up from Pac-Man Case. It was one of the games that he was giving away at our, uh, at our panel. Can you believe nobody wanted that? Yeah, no one wanted it. And I told him, I said, you know what? I don't care if I already have this game. If I do, I'm swapping it out for this one because now something that was in your collection is in ours. Because that's how I roll. Well, we have to keep an eye out if he ever does a dust sleeve or if we ever get his dust sleeve, we'll put that game in exactly. it. Exactly. Perfect fit. <laughs> well, I found a deal that I have been looking for for a really long time, actually. I have wanted the orange and, I get what is that, like purple Joy-Cons for a long time. And every time I would go to the store and decide, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just drop full price on them, they'd be out of stock or they'd go up in price. Amazon's got them for like 96 bucks or whatever. Ugh. And I've got these for $55. So I actually was like, I got a good deal. And um, these are used and they do have a, a little protective covering on them, but that's not hard to take off. 
but they look to be in really, really good condition. My only complaint, which is I'm pretty sure the same complaint everybody has with these, why can't Nintendo make it actually look like the box? Because these are the colors I wanted, not the bright orange. It's a little too orange. It's a little too bright, like neon hunter orange here. What she's saying is that she wanted orange, but she didn't want orange. Yeah, now the purple didn't bother me. I don't mind that color, the purple. That's a pretty color. And purple. Oh, I love purple. I'm excited. I finally got my Joy-Cons. Now I get to move on to the next color that I'm hunting, which is the uh, green and blue one. That purple's kind of Joker purple. I know. That's pretty, though. One of the other things that we picked up with the Siege oh, logo on right. it is a lovely little drawstring bag. Now, this is a brilliant idea because we saw a bunch of people buying these literally just to carry their stuff around yep. in. So I recommend a lot of conventions do stuff like this, like have some kind of good bag that you can that you can get from. All right, come on. Get another plushie out okay, there. Okay, we'll do another you plushie. You got plenty of plushies. I did. I got... A plush DK barrel, because why not? We can't really throw our DK barrel at people. Oh, so, 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 throw this one. so now I got one that I can throw at people. Thanks. You're thanks. welcome. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Now go to your room. Oh. Well, huge <laughs> shout out to Grant for hooking me up with a copy of Mystical Ninja Goemon. He knew that I was on the lookout for this game for quite some time. The main reason is I, I've got the box and I kind of wanted to complete that, but I have always wanted to check this out. There's only about a handful of Nintendo 64 games that I'm legitimately very curious about playing. Some of the stuff, I'm sorry, I don't feel like it's held up all that well, but this was one of the games that I really wanted to try out. So Grant really helped me out with this. He's a, he's a pretty sweet guy and, you know, he's, he's got some good dance moves too. <laughs> I got myself something practical. I got a really cute Pokemon with Eevee and Pikachu umbrella on it. So adorable. Nice. That's very nice. I that's, know. Isn't that's that actually cute? pretty cool. It looks like, you know, they've been colored on there. And I don't know. I just, I just really loved it. I thought it was cute. And it's like got that old school. They don't do this a lot anymore on umbrellas. So, so a nice, unique find. Yeah. And again, you got plenty of plushies. Let's do it. I did. Plushie. Okay. Well, this plushie <laughs> is, uh, I, I just, I kept getting drawn to him. He's so freaking adorable. He's so cute. He's called a little um, snow dragon. But I look at him and I think he landed in a field, ate up all the sheep. And now he can't fly away. That's, that's the story I've given him. Because look, he's got these little tiny wings on him. And he's so fat. There's no way he's going to fly away. Honestly, to be fair, when I first saw him, I thought he was a goat. Because he was so fat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, look at that fat little goat. That's, that's usually my problem. When I go to a buffet, I eat too much and I can't fly away anymore. Can't fly away. What are you kids looking at? Hey, look. He's trying to get up to yell at us. Oh, don't make me close that gate. <laughs> Something uh, I got just for fun. Actually, I, I I did look this one up while I was right there, and it seemed like I got a pretty good deal. They had it at 30 when I was looking at price charting, you know, for whatever it's worth. It was showing it at 60 with the box. So it does have that cardboard box, this Sega Wacky Worlds Creativity Studio. So this is the one with the mouse. Ooh. Remember in the 90s when having a mouse for something was a big deal? It has a tail. But uh, it's got that Sega branding <laughs> on the mouse itself. The fact that it came with that, you know, everything seemed to be here. And it was just kind of a Sega oddity that we could add to the collection. It couldn't resist. Uh, Sega head, do you have this? And we've got the cartridge, of course. And it looks like all it's of the really paperwork is here. You've got uh, kind of the advertisement poster piece. You've got the manual. It looks like you've even got the pack ends nice. with the Sega Club nice. and uh, the mouse information. The only thing it doesn't have is probably that cardboard that would separate everything out and, uh, you know, hold, keep the box yeah, from crushing. Things. But beyond that, I mean, everything's here and, and I don't mind that not being there at all. You know, we, we got the good stuff. So that's <laughs> what matters. Well, the last thing that I picked up is rather large, but I got myself a giant Pac-Man, and he makes noise. 
to see from here. So when I first saw this, I was like, wow, that is a huge Pac-Man. And how cute, he's got a little ghost in his mouth. That's cute. He was 50 bucks. And I was like, I don't know if I want to spend that much for him. But then I noticed that, the that you know, it comes out. I'm like, oh, that's super cute. But then all of a sudden, oh, look, there's a white ghost in there. And, and there's a bell in there. And there's cherries in there. So I was like, holy cow, there's a ton of plushies inside the plushie. What did you get into, Pac-Man? I can't keep eating. Look at me. How do you think I got this shape? <laughs> it don't feel good. Waka waka. Boop. Wee wee wee. What the? <laughs> what the f***? <laughs> so I could not pass up on this with all of the different plushies that were inside there. And the funny thing is, is I bought it and as I'm walking out, j -Love comes up to me and she goes, oh my gosh, you got that. I've been trying to find you to show it to you. It's so funny because she bought herself a smaller Pac-Man because she didn't want to try to deal with the big one, but she knew that that would be something up my alley and, and she was right. Meanwhile, I tried taking it to the car and Megadan just sat there judging me the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let's just say, as you plug in the controller, and it just so happens that some lightning hits your house. <laughs> you know, he's really, really soft. He too. is. He's got that cool, like almost suede feeling. Yeah. With the way all of the pieces come out, it makes me think of some of those dog toys. Yeah. Where they can pull out all the things. This is I not thought, for a dog. Uh, well, <laughs> keep an eye on Toby then. I know. But I thought those even little little plushy cherries. That's so cute. It's just bleh. 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 <laughs> oh, no, he's not going to fit in I here. know how you feel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you've got to eat all the... The, the things, they, they yellow. I'm full. Okay, so the last thing I picked up was at some point I lost, misplaced, gave away my copy of Threads of Fate. So that was a game I was kind of keeping an eye out for. The problem is that game has gone up in price. There was one table I saw, they had it, it was complete, and they wanted 120 for it. I saw this one and it was marked for 50 but I was already noticing a few things that didn't quite line up. Sure enough, it is a printed front and a printed back. However, they did go all out. So, you know, it's it looks nice. The disc itself, it is the real disc and it looks lovely. No scratches or damage or anything. In all honesty, I just wanted to replay it. So this was the last day of the convention. I brought it to the gentleman's attention. Actually, I, I held it up and he was, yeah, I know, they're printed covers. And I said, well, uh, is, is 50 your your top price on it? And he told me I could do 30 on it. So that was perfect. It's a great game, actually. A very interesting mix of kind of action-adventure RPG. It was very, very different. This is one of those games that it would be curious to see Square return to and see what they did, you know, to advance the game just revisit the world. It's this was actually a good show for you because usually when we leave shows, you don't usually get to leave with this many games. That is true. That is true. The vendors there were willing to make some really great deals as long as you were interested in stuff. And, uh, you know, and you, you've got people helping you out and everything. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely a plus. You got so many plushies. I did. I am curious to see where you're going to put all of those. I don't know. There's one more plushie, though that I didn't pick up, that uh, someone bought for me. Someone bought a very cute two-pack of Timmy and Tommy and presented it to me and J-Love. We got a little Timmy and, and Tommy here. Aww. Timmy and Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> So we have plushy buddy. So she's because her and I both are super duper plushy hype. So now we have matching plushies that we can, you know, have and and look at each other and remember fondly. Oh, your little brother is living with 
my sister from another mister. <laughs> <laughs> I could not resist when it's I saw so the two adorable. of them. Look at them. And that idea popped in my head. I was like, I'm, I'm buying that. And then they, they yep. each go their separate ways. So they can always look upon their plushie <laughs> and remember the other fondly. Maybe we need to make sure that anytime we go to a convention together, we bring them both and, and reunite them. <laughs> Reunited and it feels so good. All right. So, you know... There was so much other stuff that we did while we were there. Oh, my gosh, uh, yes. There was the after party Woo. at, uh, what was that? On Local Q. Local Q. So much fun. So many people there. Uh, we also had the privilege. We got to see the NES Attic from the NES Attic. It was very, very cool. That was very so cool. impressive. People talk about, you know, oh, it's just it's a game room in a closet. And you're thinking, okay, but surely not. Surely it's bigger. You're just labeling it a closet. No, it's really a closet, but it is impressive what he can do with that space. Yeah. And how he's got it set up. It's so, it is definitely like a museum. It really, I mean, people joke and say that our place is a museum, <laughs> but we just sh randomly put stuff where it fits. He literally had a, everything had its place. It was awesome. Uh, we also got to have a couple of drinks back in the Got G room with mm -hmm. some good people in there. We did. Uh, pass it around the Lady Lacey world famous <laughs> peanut butter and jelly shots. <laughs> I think uh, I think he had some new fans of it's that It's very too. funny because when you tell people about it, they're always a little leery at first until you, you know, give it to them and they try it. And it's, you know, it's, it's really great. The fact that we have a separated shot glass really helps with enhancing the flavors because they're not mixed before they get to your tongue. So the two flavors both hit your tongue at the same time. Now, that was just the first convention night, Saturday night. Sunday night, we got to have dinner with, uh, with a lot of our guests again. We returned to Twin Peaks, although I think everyone actually wanted to go to a Mexican place, but we didn't realize that af until after the uh -huh. fact. Whoops. Yeah. But uh, it was a great time <laughs> for the ladies to have one more Scooby yes, snack. Yes, we did. Jen bought everybody, all of us ladies, a round of Scooby snacks. And let me tell you, that psychedelic green drink is pretty dead gum tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, all the guys were uh, like lumps <laughs> over in the little lounge area. It was area. so funny. All the guys were over were sleepy. hanging out on the couches and chairs, and all of us ladies were still at the table yakking away and and drinking some Scooby snacks, and it was it was a pretty fun night, a pretty pretty good way of like wrapping things up. <laughs> As we started to say goodbye to some people, some were already leaving for the night, others were just heading back to their room to leave first thing in the morning. Yeah. We did go back to 8-Bit Glitch's room and hang out with Megadan and Jen and Linda. Uh, there might have been a couple more shots. We might have been, uh, you know, really feeling for poor Bandana Gamer. He was, he was a little salty about not getting that arcade stick and the Got G he, he was definitely a salty Bandana. One thing that's really on my heart and I would love to get for the collection is an Xbox arcade stick. Oh, poor guy. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> he, had, he had no idea. <laughs> but uh, we, we had some great laps in there. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon we had to get some sleep ourselves. Because we knew we had a 12-hour drive. Yeah, Monday. <laughs> Monday we put in the full 12 hours. Lady Lacey Ooh. was an absolute doll, and <laughs> in driving uh, the majority of that, she wouldn't let me drive. But uh, we made it back home safely. We had some great conversations via Polo with her friends that helped pass the time. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, there's so many memories. In fact, if you don't believe me. Check out our other videos. I believe there will be two kind of showcasing Siege and some of the other stuff that we did, as well as the videos, the full panel of the women of retro gaming. Yeah, I, I had an amazing time with my fellow ladies. We I, I was very blessed to be in such great company and I would do a panel with them all over again, but it was Gamer Aimer, Zap Crystal, Jen from J, JLove81 and me. We had a very, very fun one. And then you had your own lovely little panel too, Yeah, our, our game collecting panel. So it was myself representing Do You Nerd. We had Retro Wolf 88 representing the GameCube love, no doubt. <laughs> there was Pac-Man Case and also Blips and Pip. I was honored <laughs> to be on that panel with those guys. Uh, these guys all have great collections. You should check all of them out. They do, I mean, they do fun videos anyway, 
but just seeing the massive collections that these guys have, it's so impressive. <laughs> so again, please check out all of those other videos. If you were at Siege, share with us your experiences. Let us know if we got the chance to run into you or if you saw us walking around, probably looking like zombies. So, you know, don't take it personal if we weren't waving at people. We were just looking for juicy brains to devour. <laughs> well, Russ Lyman knows about that. <laughs> but uh, let us know about any of the pickups we got. Let us know about your pickups. Again, yes. share all those memories down below, who you got to meet up with. Uh, even if it wasn't us, you know, if it was some of the other, you know, B-listers, I guess, like Pixel Game Squad. <laughs> I'm kidding. We absolutely loved wow. getting to meet all of these people. Finally. Yes. Finally. Finally. So, We've been looking forward so to it for fortunate. years now. So uh, give the video a like. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you would like. And I'm going to go to sleep. I'm just going to turn the rest over to you. Well, don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over to Tee Public. Hit us up on the Retro Refresh. And if we like it... Yeah, we got a nerd for it and stuff and, yeah, and, just, and barrels. Just mm. go to sleep. You get games. Shreds of fate. Mar madness. Marble madness. Uh, bur burgers. Burger time. Yeah, burger. Yeah, burger. <laughs> it tastes like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for this? Yes. Are you sure this time? Shut up. <laughs> I love you, really. Hey, Jingles, lay down. You lose your collar privileges. No, I'll put it back on later. I promise I'll put it back on later. Super. The cat's having a sick moment. <laughs> The cat's getting sick in the other room. We can hear it. I'll try to remember before stepping in it. Pets are fun. <laughs> Jingles and pukey. <laughs> They're our fur babies. And then Chesta. No. I got myself a very cute Pokemon. Ready? First of all, when I saw it, I thought... Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I got it. If it's not okay, you're editing the sound. Uh, fine. Yes. You guys heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be like. Well, that's what you're doing right now. Because <laughs> it's good. <laughs>